Dude, I'm just gonna say it. I'm done with plastic. Uh, sorry, let's restart. Restart. <clears throat> Dude, I'm just gonna say it. I'm done with paper straws. I had an open mind. We tried it out for 18 months. I've had soda. I've had coffees. I've had smoothies. It's just not working. I'm sorry. I'm not saying we have to go with plastic straws. I'm just saying, I'm not flaming. I'm just saying biodegradable paper ass Ludwig. Here's the thing. Like, I, I understand. People are like, why don't you use a metal straw? I use a metal straw at home. It's fantastic. I I love it. It makes, uh, Jay's probably not here yet, but it makes a fantastic clinking sound in the iced coffee glass, okay? But I'm not, I'm sorry to tell you this because I know you're doing a good thing for the world that I'm not willing to meet you halfway on. I'm not gonna carry a metal straw around with me 24 seven. I'm not gonna carry I, I did 18 years of carrying a backpack around, like, all day with my entire life in it for school. I'm not gonna strap a, a backpack with a sleeping bag and a metal straw and a biodegradable toilet and reusable toilet paper to my, to my back. It's just not gonna happen, okay? Most of the time, I, if I go outside solo, here's all this, all this in my person, okay? We got wallet, phone, keys. That's it. That's the only thing. I'm not carrying a straw with me. It's insanity. I don't need anything else. Power bank for Pokemon Go? No, I consider Pokemon Go to be self-limited. If I get to the point where my phone battery is on 15%, I say, you know what? That's enough Pokemon Go for today. And it never ends up being a problem because... I keep my phone very well charged like throughout the day. And now all the people being superior because I saw it in Mouth's chat as well. Someone in Mouth's chat, and I, if you're here, I apologize. But someone in Mouth's chat said, I never use a straw dot 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 unless they give me one for my drink. Yeah, that's called being everybody. I don't know why you're, you're, you're gatekeeping straws. Nobody out there is like getting a, a cup and then going home and like adding their own plastic straw. That's insanity. You, you use whatever they give you. But people are also like, why would you ever use a straw? I don't know, because occasionally you'll be outside and you'll be like, I feel like a smoothie, obviously. Everybody that's like, uh, let's get a, the meme generator going, okay? People who who say they never use a straw when they get a milkshake. What? It's so, oh, I just use a plastic spoon. Oh, no. I'm just saying, I'm done. Look, I'm not going all in, okay? I'm not, I, I'm a little bit on my polluting arc, but I'm not like becoming the bad guy from Captain Planet or something like that. I will say we have family members and I'm gonna leave them anonymous to protect them. When we go uh, to their house, they just throw everything in the trash. And I'm, I mean everything. Food scraps, aluminum cans, glass bottles, it all goes in the trash can. And that's, no, and the silverware goes in the sink. Now that's like not good, but it is really convenient when I'm at their place to clean up after dinner. Like when it's time to clean up, I'm like, man, this is living. <laughs> at home, we compost. Composting is fine. Like you just put your food scraps in the compost and then we bring it down to like a shared bin. Nothing wrong with that. Garbage is obviously easy. And recycling, you, uh, I mean, recycling is kind of annoying because sometimes you'll like order something and then they'll give you 75 little plastic containers full of chutney and like eight, I don't need eight different kinds of salsa that come with my like uh, quesadilla or something like that. I understand if you're dining in, you can provide all that salsa, but you can li just give me one container of salsa, et cetera. So then you got to rinse them out. You throw the plastic into the recycling. You sort it out. They load the recycling onto a big truck and drive it to a place where they go, this isn't recyclable, and then throw it into an orange barrel that's on fire. That's annoying, but I still do it at home. But man, oh man, whenever I'm at uh, my family's house and they're just throwing everything in the trash, I'm like, man, this is living. <laughs> Plastic water bottles. Hey, where should I put this? Oh, you can just put it in the garbage. Holy cow. Just say, yeah, exactly. That's the thing. It's just like they used to back in the 80s, man. That's what it's it's like a simulation. It's like a little look back to what life was like in, in the 70s, 80s, and, and maybe the early 90s. Also, someone said, why are you cleaning up at your at your family's place? Uh excuse me. You don't when you go to someone's house as a guest, 
they cook you dinner, you have an obligation to at least make an effort to clean up. That's your role as the guest. You don't have to do the dishes, but you should at least try to do the dishes before they go, you don't have to do that. I got it. But at the very least, you have to make a token effort to pick up the plates and move them next to the sink. You stack up all the plates on top of each other in descending order of cleanliness, and then you bring the plates next to the sink and you say something like, hey, where's your sponge? And then they go, oh, don't worry about it. You just go relax. What if the food was shit? Honestly, okay, here we go. Cause now this is like a, a it's like a, you wouldn't understand unless you have kids bit. I would rather eat a bad meal that was cooked for me than uh, cook one myself right now. Because it feels like an unbelievable act of charity to just have someone be like, hey, here's your dinner. <laughs> That's not always the case, but, but right now, if I'm like, oh man, I could save like, you know, half an hour and just have food that's only for fuel instead of for, well, we don't have to worry about it because my wife does like most of the cooking right now because I've lost kitchen privileges after my infection, but she makes great stuff. So that I'm kind of getting like the best of both worlds right now. Look, I'm not saying we have to go back to plastic straws, okay? I'm just saying that the paper straws are not a viable alternative. If they just, if they make a paper straw that's better, then we could have paper straws. But right now the paper straws are not accomplishing what they need to accomplish. They're, they're an unacceptable alternative to the plastic straw. We don't have to go back to the ones that get stuck in the turtle's nostrils, but we have to at least like re-engineer the paper straw to be better or come up with a viable environmentally conscious alternative. Because when I'm out in public and I'm drinking a, a smoothie, it's like a race against time. You gotta drink the smoothie before the paper straw uh, dies and you feel like you got a you got like stomach freeze. You're drinking the smoothie so fast and it's so thick it's making like ice cream in your duodenum. But if you don't if you drink it slower, the bottom of the straw is gonna melt into the juice before you even get to the bottom and it's not gonna work. But I have to say, if you give me the choice between Barks root beer and mug root beer, I'm taking mug root beer or excuse me, I'm taking Barks root beer any day uh, of the damn week. Then I'm probably taking A and W root beer in a in a paper cup. Then I'm taking Dad's root beer in a in a glass bottle. Then I'm taking A and W root beer in the frosted mug that you can actually get at the establishment. If you're classy, you got your shirt buttoned up to the top and you're dining in at an A and W restaurant. You're not even a controversial soda take. The soda flavor matters less than the vessel in which it's served in. I would, I would take a mug in a frosted mug over A&W in a warm tin can any day of the week. False, true, I love it. Anyway, sorry, we got some gold. Enjoy this period where I don't know what's going on before we go on an insane run and win like 40 runs in a row. And everybody forgets about the take about, I wish we would bring back plastic straws and throw all of our recyclables in the garbage can because it just makes life more convenient. Isn't life hard enough? By the way, I need to add that this is a bit at at my house i do compost and recycle i diligently wash out all of the unnecessary plastic packaging that the uber eats orders are sent in i put them in the recycling bin where it's then shipped to a facility where they say this isn't recyclable and they throw it in a in a garbage can so anyway you know what i will say at least we're past the point there was like in the late 2000s early 2010s we shipped, we shifted in cities from single-use garbage bins you throw everything in to the three or or more bin garbages that were like garbage, like recyclables, like cans, paper, and stuff like that. But there was like five years where if you looked in the bin, all three of those bins just fed into one big garbage can. I have, I feel like I haven't seen that in like seven or eight years. I'm glad we moved past that. Still happens sometimes. I haven't seen it in a while, but I also get, um, I get confused, okay? So sometimes you'll go to a grocery store and you'll, um, you get a receipt, obviously, if you want it. Um, I just get it to make the cashier feel better. They go, do you want a receipt? They're already holding it like this. And then I'm like, I might as well take it. Do, does that go in the landfill or does that go in mixed paper? Can you recycle paper with ink on it? Or does like the, does the ink make it so that it's not recyclable? What if the ink is like tapioca ink? I never know how this stuff goes. I, you know what? Here's the thing though. Uh, apparently it's okay. Uh, it's okay to throw it into the, the paper. I'm glad to hear that. 
All I'm gonna say though is at least when you accidentally put paper in the landfill, it's still gonna biodegrade. It's much worse to put styrofoam in the paper container, I'm sure. That probably screws up their whole day. You know what's funny as well? I'm not supposed to drink anything that's not a clear liquid, but they do say it's okay to have coffee as long as you don't put milk or cream in it. Coffee, not a clear liquid at all, but I have to imagine that they probably had people come in for their colonoscopy, like grumpy as hell, at, uh, you know... 12.30 after lunch. They hadn't had coffee in like 40 hours. And then they said, you know what? We're gonna have uh, we're gonna make an exception for this. Coffee makes you poop though, so it's probably fine. Yeah, but soda's like the laxative um, that I have to get at the pharmacy. I have to drink, I, I, I haven't gotten it yet. Like I'm getting it this afternoon. If you've never had a colonoscopy, which you, I had, I've never had until after tomorrow, you have to drink four liters of it <laughs> in, in like, I don't know how fast you have to do it, but the recommendation says uh, do it in, like drink one full glass every 15 minutes. And I'm like, holy cow, man. I'm not worried, I know how this sounds. I'm not worried about the taste of the laxative. I'm not even worried about all the pooping, because again, like I already went through it for the, you know, the infection in the first place that precipitated the need for the colonoscopy to begin with. So I like, I'm not sweating that too much. It triggered my poison reflex. We, we, we have a poison reflex as human beings? What was your last meal before the colonoscopy? Well, let me, uh, for breakfast after my Peloton ride this morning, which I, well, let's slash marker fall, guys. For, for breakfast after my Peloton ride this morning, I bring this up because I'm having my colonoscopy tomorrow. I had a good Peloton ride, by the way. I have to say, it was like the first time I really felt like I, uh, since the illness, it was one of the first times I felt like I was getting some strength back. Normal output was like, you know, pre-illness was like 340 to 360. Occasionally higher, occasionally lower. On, during illness and after the course of antibiotics, I was down there in the 270s to the 290s. It's like 25% fitness loss. That's, that's not great. How long of a ride? All I do are 30 minutes. So, and occasionally a 10 minute, beginner yoga class but today i got back i got to 320 and i was or 327 or something like that and i was like you know what 327 that's that that's approaching what my average was pre-illness it's on the lower end but i'm feeling a little better anyway so after that i had some flatbread and smoked salmon just because i'm on a bit of a smoked salmon kick and then for my last meal i was gonna have a granola bar because it was i was live and it's at 10 a.m so it's kind of an inconvenient time for me to, to start a fast um but then i remembered that my gastroenterologist would literally uh kill me and hide the body if i ate like a nut before my colonoscopy so instead i just had a glass of kefir which was not on the forbidden foods list he's cracked by the way, I'm gonna say, I'm not concerned about the anesthesia. I've been anesthetized before for my hydrocelectomy. So I, I'm honestly looking forward to it. I'm sure it's gonna be like some of the best sleep I've had in a while. But they do say, and, and this is just, it just concerned me, okay? They said, you'll be placed under general anesthetic and should have no memory of the procedure. Now, what I think a lot of people would have trouble with is that should. What I have trouble with is the memory part. Because just because you don't remember something happening doesn't mean it didn't happen. So in my head, I'm like, I think I know what they meant. But at the same time, <laughs> is there going to be like 30 to 45 minutes of me feeling a pinching sound in, or a, a pinching feeling in my colon? that's very unpleasant, and then uh, falling asleep, waking up, and being like, oh, is it already over? Because that's still trauma that I underwent. Oh, they hit you with the, M the MIB Neuralizer. Okay, fair enough. I'm not worried about it. I'm, I, like I said, because whatever, it's just, you know, I can deal with that. I'm telling you, the colonoscopy is nothing compared to uh, the feeling of your legs slowly going septic. <laughs> I hate disappointing the believers. This is a war chest though. Sorry, I ran Psycho Casino. I'm gonna write. It's a lot of stuff to manage, man. Like no joke, if you're a casino, if you're a, well, the, the Freudian slip. If you're a streamer, 
and you're playing a game and you're reading chat and you're running a casino, you probably have a harder job than, I'm gonna say 30% of the workforce. I'm not gonna say something ridiculous like 50%, but you have a harder job than the average office worker, in my opinion, whose duties boil down to keeping their boss happy, filling out blanks in form templates and responding to their voicemails after they come back from lunch. It's harder in terms of its duties, not in terms of the existential, you know, dread that comes alongside of it. I still feel that, but probably not as much. But then there, I, I feel it in like a different way, because instead of being like, oh, you know, like I can't do another like month of this job that I hate. Instead, I'm like, man, if I was to die, it's kind of messed up that I would have like a legacy, but my legacy, it would, it, I don't think it would be long lived, don't get me wrong. But it wouldn't be like as a human being, it would be like as an entertainer. Like I, one of the main things keep like making me not want to die is I would, would not want to, I mean, I, I wouldn't see it, but you got to level with me here. You got to let me go off on the bit. I don't think I, I could deal with the idea that people were posting like, Oh, I'm so sad that he died. I loved his XCOM videos. Oh. 89% yes. Okay, congrats. If anybody doubted with their whole net worth twice in a row, congrats on your, your quick uh, like 100x. <laughs> I ran the casino again immediately as well. Okay, let's get the brain off autopilot. See, this is what happens when I have to fast, man. I'm missing like the normal glucose levels in my brain right now. You just ate? That was 96 minutes ago, okay? And honestly, the I think the first part of the fast is the hardest. That's what people usually say. They're always like, dude, once you get through the first couple hours of the fast, you're good. The rest is just automatic. I've done it. So I did a, a, a well, there's, a, there's nuances to this story. In order to graduate from high school in the province I grew up in, you needed to do 40 hours of community service. As a teenager, I was unmotivated to engage in that sort of activity, but there was a bit of a loophole. There was a, uh, a charity event called the 30-hour famine which raised money and awareness for world hunger. So all you had to do was not, you, you had to do, stay in the school like overnight and for 30 hours, everybody that was doing the event just didn't eat, but it was kind of like a big slumber party. We played some Halo 2 in the gym. We watched the movie Dog Soldiers. And by we, I, I don't mean like this was a school sanctioned thing. I mean me and my other friends in the in the 12th grade. So I, I have done this for 30 hours. Like I fasted for 30 hours before. I'm not too worried about it, but also like I was like a kid back then. Now I'm an adult. I've got an, a, an adult's caloric needs. Also after th I like the our graduating year, they recognized the 30 hour famine loophole was allowing people to not uh, do community service in the spirit that it was originally intended. So they made they moved it to a three to two ratio. So for every 30 hours fasted, you only got 20 hours of community service. But I got in right under the wire. My remaining uh, 10 hours, one day on summer vacation, I went to my aunt's office and she said, hey, can you help me install this router? So I installed a router and then a printer for her in her office. And then she said, that's really all I had to do today. You can just take a nap on the couch. So I just took a nap on their sofa. And then she was like, there's 10 hours of work. <laughs> no way, okay. And then, oh no, I think she gave me eight hours. And then I legitimately did two hours of, um, I manned the canteen at a charity event. So people would come up and be like, I'll have a soda. And I would be like, that's a dollar and they would give me a loony and then I would hand them the soda. So 2.5% of my, of my, well, I don't know, the 30 hour famine is legitimate. You probably shouldn't get 30 hours of community service for it because mostly I was just, <laughs> again, I was playing Halo 2 predominantly and then we had a big slumber party in the cafeteria. Malf was there. There were people that like ate during the 30 hour famine though. With, like they snuck into the bathroom and like ate potato chips. That's just ignorant. Me and Malf did it legitimately. I'll vouch for him. I mean, I think probably like 80% of the of the people did it legit. I'm gonna get first rounded again. 
I mean, like, this is the perfect opportunity for, like, any I users in the chat. Like, have you been seeing how the games have been going so far? There's exactly three people in front of me. Yeah, well, all right. <laughs> oh, man. What are you smoking? Stop betting belief. I don't know how, how many times you need to see it. On you don't have, by the way, there's a false dilemma that, that is happening. People are like, well, I, I'm, I'm never going to bet, bet doubt. Okay, give it a second to see if my brain comes back. You don't have to bet every time. You could abstain a little bit. You could just say, this one doesn't, I, I feel uneasy making my bet right now. I'm just going to take a couple of bets off. But no, you, you crave it. You know what's messed up? is I think that if you get into the psychology of gambling, I think that it's the losses that make it sticky more than the wins. Like, I think if you, if you surveyed or observed gamblers, are they more likely to gamble more after a series of wins or after, after a series of losses? There's no question. They're more likely to gamble after a series of losses. Get it twisted. Gambling is an investment. You will not lose money. It's impossible. You just need to get the big one. You just need the big one to hit. Just one, just book, 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 and you're in. You will rebuild your life. <laughs> I remember, dude, I, I don't mean to knock anybody personally. I have watched some gambling streams. I just don't, like, at best, I'm like, this is just not my thing, which is okay. But at worst, it actually makes me mad. Like, I remember there was, like, a Drake was streaming, uh roulette and he was just he was putting 50 or not 50 sorry someone said 50 basis points and you threw me he was throwing a million dollars on each bet and the bets were like psychotic it wasn't like a like i'm betting on red i'm betting on black it was like i'm betting on a specific like visual pattern on the board but like that stream just made me mad and it wasn't even because like oh that million dollars like could have done something for like people in need that's definitely true, and there's like a part of that. But it was more because like he wasn't even having fun. <laughs> like at no point was there a smile on Drake's face. The whole time he was just like a million dollars, brr, a million dollars, brr. Hold on, maybe there's only two people left and I can beat this guy and qualify. Oh, you fool. You absolute... You idiot. I'm in, man. I'm in. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Let's go. It's just like you. I I get that. Like, there's a difference between like visibly having fun and like your brain firing neurotransmitters, like making you feel like you're having fun. But like he was he was like not even watching like what happened with the bets. Like the only commentary was like after three straight losses, he's like, we gotta move to a new table. And then he like hits the back button on his browser and then clicks on like a different roulette table. And you're like, it's I mean, I know you like he, he has to at least understand that that doesn't make any sense, but <laughs> And also, I mean, and maybe this is more judgmental towards the people that are in the gambling industry, but like the slot machines look so shitty. Like, is there a, is there a rule that every slot machine has to look like a horrible like Facebook game from 2007? I lived, still living, by the way. And I never know what's happening. Like, I'm still in the era of slot machines where it's like you want to get three bells in a row. And then all the new slot machines are like, hey, you're playing 75 different, like, arbitrary, like, zigzags that make no sense. I never know if anybody's uh, winning or losing, uh, except based on their reaction. And I never get to take the time to learn, because A, I don't find it that entertaining, which is, again, fine. It's not, it's not my stream, it's not my choice of entertainment. But then secondarily, you never get a second to analyze, like, why someone won, because, like, one second spent without the real spinning is is apparently like against the whole principle of the thing so like there's never time to to actually decipher what happened instead it's just bzz, 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 like over and over if they made a fortnite slot machine i might consider it by the way two believer wins in a row look at that 
I don't know. Like, again, I'm, I'm not anti-vice, you know? It just... I, gambling is like a vice that, for me, I just don't derive any pleasure from. And I, I don't know. Like, again, I'm, this is genuinely not meant to be judgmental. But whenever I watch the stream, it just looks like I'm watching somebody, like, um, just get, like, an injection of the chemicals they need. Not drugs, but, like, brain juice. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm never, like, this person streaming. I'm always, like, this person just turned the camera on, and they're just, like, I'm watching, like, a an MRI of their brain just light up over and over. I, stop giving me games with fruit, because I... Like, I'm mid-fast. It's been 90... No, it's been almost 120 minutes. Holy cow, I got so distracted because I was doing so well. I'm gonna drink, like, 1,500 calories worth of apple juice today, for sure. Nice fast. Well, it's not a fast. I just, I can only consume clear liquids, like apple juice and coffee. Oh, it's... That, not only is it allowed, it's encouraged. It's also technically not a fast because um, I have to drink four liters of medical grade laxative. Coffee is clear. I don't know. Dude, like, I'm just going by the instructions. It said you can have coffee with as long as it has no cream or milk in it. Coffee is clear? What the hell are you talking about? Coffee is clear. Yes, many people are pointing out alcohol is clear. Um, I'm just going to tell you that, like, I think you have a problem. I think that's kind of like a warning sign. I don't think you should be like, oh, clear liquids? You know what would be awesome is like, let's get hammered on straight vodka or a vodka coffee cocktail like the night before a medical procedure. I think you got a, you got a, a huge problem. Nice surprise for the doctor. I think the doctor would know, man. It's called Everclear. The only, I, I bought a bottle of Everclear once when I, I went to America as like a literally a 21.1 year old after we drank the bottle over the course of a few days we lit a match and held it up to the lip of the bottle and watched all the alcohol that was uh, on the edge of the bottle that had remained uh immediately light on fire vaporize and then disappear and that was the most entertaining part of the whole endeavor that's the best part I, I was like, you know what? That's pretty cool. And then you smoke that shit. <laughs> Let's go. I, I've received like... I Okay, that's literally a stream sniper. Which is fine. Like, I, it's a fair price to pay. But that I was targeted for deletion like two times. By somebody in a, in a cat outfit. At noon on a Wednesday. On a non-holiday week. You're gonna tell me that's not... Targeting? I think that's targeting. <laughs> that is a person taking out their frustrations on life on me. And I, I just have to accept that, that it happens from time to time. You know? It's not really their fault, really. Isn't school out? Yeah, school probably let out for them in about 2011, if I had to guess. We did not qualify from that round. When they were in the seventh grade. Uh, anyway, moving on. Refund would be fine. No, we lost. It's fair. But I'm definitely not going to get hammered the night before my, my colonoscopy. That's definitely a cause for... Like, after the colonoscopy appointment, they should refer you to, like, a psychiatrist, probably. I say that with no irony. <laughs> what about the night after? I don't know. Like, maybe? In the documentation, they tell you not to because uh, you're still under the effects of the medicine that they give you, but... I mean, it's probably, I don't know, it's probably better than the, the, the night before, but this is not medical advice. Do get it twisted. They also, the med, oh, I was talking about the medical administration industry. It was like, so they called me so many times to like verify different stuff. And I'm like, it, 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 I'm not, maybe it's more of a reflection of society. Cause we like, I confirmed everything in this questionnaire that they gave me over the phone at their, uh, Ambition? I don't want to ever call anybody on the phone. But I did this questionnaire on the phone where they made sure that I read the material. Then they were like, okay, we're going to send you an email. If you could look at all that stuff, that would be great. In order to confirm my appointment, I had to do the exact same questionnaire I did on phone over the email. So I did the questionnaire again and read all the material so that I could confirm my appointment. And then... It said, your appointment is confirmed, see you Thursday. And then I got a phone call that said, hey, we're just calling from the doctor's office to confirm your appointment for tomorrow. 
it was after business hours. So, you know, I, I got up, you know, the same time I normally get up and I called them. To, they said, just leave us a voicemail to say whether or not you're going to be here. To which I left, the, I tried to leave them a voicemail at like 8.01 a.m. Because their office wasn't open yet. Here's a new one. The voicemail's not on. What the hell is the purpose of the voicemail? If it isn't active when you're not at the office. Like it doesn't, I, I guess I get that you would be on like a, you would be busy or on like a different phone line at the time, but... Like, I, I was losing my mind. So then I had to turn... I, I had to wait like 10 minutes and I called back. And I left them a voicemail. I guess they flipped the switch. And the voicemail was like, Hey, this is like my name. I'm calling to confirm my appointment for tomorrow. And here's... I, I swear to you, here's what the phone message said. Um, I've already started my fast. I've read all the material. And I'll be there 10 minutes before the appointment. If you need to talk to me, please leave a voicemail. But don't call me... Uh, or don't expect me to pick up because I will be away during business hours. But otherwise, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I, I legit, like, tried to answer any question that they might have for... that would give them reason for a callback over the course of my voicemail so that they would not feel the need to call me back. Well, I know. I mean, I did say look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Why? I'm stupid. Like, it's not their fault I'm getting a colonoscopy. I'm not like, fuck you, you fucking gastroenterologist's office. I'm not flaming, I'm just saying, etc., etc. Hey, hey, lads, can we just... There you go. Good good work. Solid tiptoe. Beautiful. Nothing makes you lose faith in doctors more than actually having to see them. Look, I... <laughs> I hate that I am starting to agree with you. I even I had the same thing with my family doctor. They left me a voicemail and were like, hey, we need you to like uh, verify your account on our middleware web portal so that we can like legally uh, show you your test results. So then I did that. They did not show me a test result. They sent me an, uh, a requisition and were like, please go to Life Labs and do this test in order to determine like if there's a... Uh, like a salmon, uh, an antibiotic resistant form of bacteria that's presently like endemic in BC. And I'm like, just shit is like, again, when I need you to do something, it's a six week wait. When you need me to do something and I'm on island time, it's like, why haven't you done it yet? Well, you just let me know today that I'm like overdue. They should have, can't they just take a bunch of blood like the first time? Can't they just take like a liter of blood when they run a blood test? And then if they need you to come back for more blood tests, just use some of the reservoir. <laughs> Can't you just put it in like a big, like a walk-in or something like that? <laughs> okay, no, not a liter, like a quart or something, whatever. Although I gotta got take a day off work every single time because Life Labs is like, please use our online check-in system. Then you try to use the online check-in system and it's like, oh, we're experiencing an error right now. Just walk in. It's a two minute wait. Then you get there and it is not a two minute wait. That's a damn lie. I also understand, like, this is all just joking. You know, obviously, like, the medical industry is probably, like, fucking annoying and stressful to work in to begin with. And then COVID comes in and not only, like, overloads the hospital system, it makes the procedures, like, so much harder to do because you have to isolate and separate people, thus lowering your capacity. And also, I'm sure you end up dealing with, like, belligerent people, like, nonstop. But I'm, like, the ideal customer. So is there not a way that I can just get, like, a card that I flash when I go to the emergency room that's like, I'm not a hypochondriac. Can I just get looked at real quick? I promise it'll be like, if I could just have a doctor's, five minutes of a doctor's time right now, I won't take up any space in your waiting room. I won't, uh, you know, use your bathroom or anything like that. I'm, I'm TSA pre-checked. I just want to talk to a doctor and be like, my legs are turning red. Am I going to die? And he'll be like, yeah, please like go see this person. And I'll be like, all right. Everyone would opt into that option. No, you don't get to opt in. Your doctor has to like give you a, they have to sign it for you. They have to be like, this person's cool. And if you ever go to the emergency room and then your doctor says, it's just a cold, you, you're, it's revoked for five years, like your passport. Kate is ordering a pizza, ha ha. 
pizza for lunch? Like a, like a couple slices for lunch? That's normal. A pizza for lunch, for one, that's decadent, man. That's, <laughs> she's just rubbing it in now. Ordering a pizza for dinner, okay, I can see it. For lunch? I did say, I, I, I said, tomorrow night you're on your own for dinner because I'm fasting. So I'm, in, I'm interested. It's rarely do you get a chance to see your spouse's ideal food item, a little preview of what they'd order like the day after you died. I'm interested to see what it's gonna be. She had sushi yesterday, so I think she probably won't go sushi again. I don't know, I honestly don't have an answer for it. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Korean fried chicken. And I don't begrudge her for it. If she wants to have some Korean fried chicken, you know, I'm not gonna ask her to eat gruel just cause I can only drink like apple juice. You shouldn't have to ask. Well, that was the subtext for sure, is like, oh, you're not gonna have gruel tonight? My wife orders dinner without me all the time. Everybody's different, I would be pissed. Cause I structure my whole day around eventually having the conversation, what are we gonna have for dinner? So to not only like, lo well, you know what? I wouldn't be mad at all if she ordered it for two. But if she just, if she ordered dinner for one, and then was like, oh, you can like get whatever you want. I already ate, I would be like, I would feel slighted, but I am interested to see what she orders. I wouldn't be surprised. Korean fried chicken is high on the list. Dude, I can't be in this lobby. Oh, dude, oh, never mind. That made it all worth it. Every time I'm in goblin mode, I eat an entire pizza. I'm starting to think about what I'm going to get when, I, when I'm home from the colonoscopy. I think it might be a McDonald's drive through day for sure. Are you excited Rick and Morty is coming back in September? I have a, a completely neutral opinion on um, on that. I, have a com I, I don't watch the show. I'm not gonna be a hater and say, no, I'm not glad it's coming back. Cause I've never actually met like an annoying Rick and Morty fan in real life. Everybody's seen the, that, that one Rick and Morty fan that did the Szechuan stuff. Like, I jumped on the counter and, and begged for the Szechuan sauce. Like, that guy has ruined the perception of Rick and Morty fans for everybody. Now, have I ever seen somebody in public wearing a Rick and Morty shirt and as a result of that video been like, I bet that guy was the guy who was on the counter begging for the Szechuan sauce? Yeah, but that's my own cross to bear. That's not their fault. I got nothing against the show, really. Where's my Szechuan sauce? I'm Tango Rick! Like I thought it was a, I, the, the few episodes I saw, this is pre Szechuan sauce. I was like, I think this show is, is like a little funny. I'll be honest. This is going to be like the most minus twos I've gotten in a long time. Even in the modern era, I would rather watch a Rick and Morty episode over a Bob's Burger episode any day of the damn week. I, I just, I can't, and I, I'm not, I got nothing against H. John Benjamin. It's like quite the opposite. I like J H. John Benjamin a lot. It's just, uh, I don't know. There's just something about the show where I'm like, it maybe is my own cynicism, but the fact that it's like a wholesome Simpsons where like the family like loves each other so much. I'm like, who cares? It's, it's got... It's, it's too wholesome for me. But then the flip side of that is like, I will never watch another episode of Archer again as long as I live. Archer is almost like, it's just millennial edgy for edges sake. Okay, I get it. Like he's drunk all the time. Who cares? I just don't want, I don't want to watch cartoons. I don't know what it is. It's not even the fact that it's animated. It's just like, I don't know. It's so hard to strike the balance between like, like two easy to swallow and to like just being edgy for edgy's sake that's like that's what i'm at like fraser fraser struck the balance but that's live action i would watch like an animated fraser maybe king of the hill yeah i mean this is not fair because these are from my childhood so i'm gonna have like nostalgia for them i'm gonna everybody thinks that for the most part like the the best thing is the thing that's not made yet this, the second best thing, and the first best thing that's actually real is like what you liked the most when you were like 17. And then everything new fucking sucks ass. But the thing that's so new it's not even made yet is gonna be incredible. Don't worry. And I'm as guilty of it as anybody else. We do have air conditioning. We're doing well during the heat wave. A cat's cat's gone! Eat shit! <laughs> I mean, good game. A, what a sporting endeavor we just had. Um, 
I, I, so I gained a lot of street cred at daycare during the food poisoning arc. I lost a lot because uh, I lost a lot of street cred, I should say, because I picked up my daughter from daycare yesterday. They said, how did you do when daycare was closed last week? I said, we, it was fine, we were on a cruise. So already it was like, A, we weren't really sweating there being no daycare, and B, we were on like a legitimate vacation. And then we were talking for a bit, and the guy said, how are you dealing with this heat wave? And I said, it's pretty hot. And then he said, do you guys have air conditioning? And I said, yes. <laughs> so I couldn't even steal like any valor there. But my first statement was not a lie. It is, like it's by Vancouver standards, it's, it's quite hot. How'd you like the cruise? The cruise food, when my family went, we thought it was amazing. Dude, it was legit. The food was fantastic. Stop asking me about food, by the way. That was a sneaky little food question. But uh, the, the meals, they were like good restaurant quality for sure. We also had, and I, again, I'm sure the waiter does this to every table, but he was like, here's my recommendations for tonight. So I start, I, first day I order whatever what I want. I ordered whatever I wanted, I should say. Second day, I said, you know what? I'm going to take your recommendation. It was better. Third day, I took his recommendation for everything. But on dessert, I said, how is this dessert that I wanted? And he said, honestly, it's a little dry. So then I said, you know what? I want to try it anyway. He brought it out. I ate it. And I said, you know what? It's a little dry. And from that point onwards, I trusted his recommendations 100% of the way. He was not misleading me. I don't believe that he was trying to put me in a situation where they just had extra pecan tarts in the back. And he was trying to push that instead of the beignets or whatever. I was like, he's, this guy's got my best interest in mind. He was back there with a damn hair dryer. <laughs> just throwing white flour on it mixing it up white flour mixing it up it's a little flowery that was me i got you i know it was not you because i said what are you gonna do now that the cruise is over and he said the next group gets on in like an hour and then i'm back at sea for another seven days and i was like oh all right it's kind of, in, in hindsight, kind of a stupid question, I guess. I guess your cruise isn't over if you, like, work on the cruise ship. I apologize. This is, my, this is the first time I've ever been on one. I didn't mean to ask such an idiotic question. Any chance you were in room 728? Ooh, oh, hey, everybody. Oh, bow down. We have a veranda viewer. We have someone who paid extra for the veranda room with the little balcony on it. Ooh la la, I didn't real. Or is that one of the concierge suites that they offer? I did, well, well, well. I was in the damn cargo hold, man. I was supposed to be in the cargo hold, but I got upgraded. Oh, well, 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 a free upgrade. We have a, a Disney Cabana Vacation Club member in the chat. Did you actually have to pay for the cruise or did you just use points from your recent seven weeks stay at their resort on their their own private Caribbean island. We, we actually went up to inquire about another cruise. First question they asked, they looked at us like we were idiots. Um, when we looked at them like we didn't know what they were talking about. They said, if you wanted to go on this cruise, are you going to pay with money or points? To which I thought, honestly, why don't we say points? Because I know what money is and I value it. Points, on the other hand, I've got no idea what they are. So, I feel like I would rather spend those. By the way, we qualified somehow. My Disney adult parents paid for me and my wife to go. Honestly, you should not... Be, I think that you... There's a... Like a sign curve for embarrassment. When you're 16, you're like, of course my parents paid for it. When you're like 23, you're like... I'm so embarrassed my parents paid for this thing. I'm here to, I'm 33. When my parents pay for anything, I'm like, do it. It's great now. Like, I love when my parents come to visit. I usually insist on paying for the first meal. And then they go like, oh, let us get this one. Let us get this one. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'm 35 and I went on a Cayman Islands vacation with their timeshare points. 
send it, man. If I had any perks of my job that would like my parents would gain an advantage from, I would give it to them. But I don't. Like sometimes I get like like merch and I'm like, hey mom, do you want like a beanie? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, obviously. But that's about it. If my mom was a gamer, she could have she could have shared Steam account access, but she's not really. She plays a lot of solitaire. My fiance's parents won't let me pay for anything. I had to stop fighting it. Dude, that's what it's like with my in-laws. When when we were in Washington, they wouldn't let me pay for anything. And then they I was like, you gotta let me pay for at least like one of these dinners. And then they were like, no, just get us back when you're in Vancouver. When they were in Vancouver, I paid for brunch. The way I had to do it was to pretend to go to the bathroom, but then instead just go up to the cash register and be like, I would like to pay for our table immediately. And then for lunch, they did the same thing to me, but I owe, I'm like seven meals in debt to them right now. So I was gonna get like two back. But then they kept it even. It's not brunch and lunch, you know, it was like a, whatever. You're focusing on the semantics. It's not, it, the point is the story really happened, I promise. Okay. I know it's, it's not, and I, I basically, you, you have two choices. You could dedicate the entire dinner. The confetti again, with the confetti again. And this time I dove. You can dedicate like the entire meal to figuring out how you're gonna like Sam Fisher your way into paying the bill. Or you could just be like, you know what? Fucking fine, you pay. And I think that's fine as long as they don't get mad of that they're paying too much. If they're like, I enjoy paying, that's fine. If they're like, if their dream is that there would be an even amount of payment, then they gotta stop fighting so hard. Because I, I feel like self-conscious uh, about it. But the flip side is, now I just let them pay. And I'm like, as long as I made some effort, like I'm not upset about it, whatever. Go for it. I can't stop. Well, they, okay, so like we, I don't know if anyone here is from Washington. Because someone in chat said, what you should do is let them pay. And then give them um, an equivalent amount, roughly, in what the dinner cost in... Uh, a gift, like a bottle of wine or, or a whiskey or a, a gift basket or something like that. Um, we tried to do that last time. We were like, hey, we'll stop at one of those outlet uh, emporiums that there's tons of near the border. We, we drove to one. It was called The Outlet, The Premium Outlet. Drove in. Every single store had been like wallpapered over. There was like a, a poke restaurant and a uh, like a clothing store that specifically was aimed at old women and then like just a bunch you could see where like there used to be like a nike store but now there is no nike store now there's just a, a building that looks like an old sears with a swoosh on it so we were unable to get them anything it's, a, it's the danger of, you know, going city to town, you know? In the city, you're like, oh, I need anything? I can get that real quick. That was a weird one, but look at that. We stepped on the line. How bad is inflation in Canada? About the same as America. Thanks a lot, Joe Biden, right? Jeez, the guy's... Despite being, uh, he's like simultaneously incompetent and also omnipotent, right? Dude doesn't know what he's doing somehow caused 10% inflation uh, everywhere on planet Earth. It's incredible. Is it 5D chess? I, this is obviously satirical. I see that you're not on keto. Dude, honestly, uh, here's my, and I, I know we're talking about a lot of, uh, we're talking a lot about food. I think keto sucks because I don't see, I don't know anybody in my life who did it um, sustainably. Everybody I know in my life that ever did keto made amazing progress on keto and looked forward to when they hit their goal weight so that they could get off keto as soon as possible. And I'm not saying that means that they gained all the weight that they lost back immediately. I'm only saying that I think it, it kind of sets you up for failure to have an overly restrictive diet like that. Because you, there's no way you're, you're gonna, you, like you see yourself doing that in, in 10 years, you're gonna be on like 10 keto for 10 years straight. I'm not saying nobody's ever done, I'm just saying it's, I think it's not likely. We have a local radio host that stands by. He's been doing it for 10 plus years. 
Okay, but like with all due respect, like be a radio host is basically like a streamer. Like with a, unless they're on like NPR, without being needlessly rude, they don't necessarily have to know anything. I'm and I'm I I deliberately put in the cell phone there cuz it's not like I own any or I know anything either. I'm just saying like this is oh hello. <laughs> Hi, nice to see you again. Um this is not meant to be like an anti-keto take even. Because if you, you know, if you need to do a restrictive diet to get down to like a specific weight or something like that, you know, I, 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 that's not my area of expertise. You should talk to a nutritionist or something. But I think like a lot of it comes from like the desire that's like, I want to lose 40 pounds in, you know, five months. So you're like, I have to do something that's not merely sustainable, because if something was sustainable, it would be too slow and I wouldn't look good like in my wedding photos or something like that. I think that maybe the secret is like, or maybe there is no secret. Maybe, maybe the secret is that you should just slowly build good sustainable habits and exercise rather than like, I'm never, I'm, I'm going to eat as much cheese as I want, but I'm going to count the number of leaves of spinach on my plate like it just that that seems like overly complicated and it's one of those things that is like it sounds easy but i i think it's actually hard i think that the easy thing is just to be like am i hungry i'm not gonna eat but then it's hard to get over your own psychology obviously or just get a simultaneous campylobacter salmonella infection that's also true and then there was that study as well that was like, um, people who are slightly overweight tend to live longer than people who are, like, at the normal weight. Or at the, the, what they consider to, I know BMI is BS, but I'm sure that's probably what they used. But the, the gist of the study was basically like, people who are like 20 to 30 pounds overweight tend to actually live longer than people who are like, quote unquote, like at the norm, the weight they should be at. Extreme copium? What do you mean? Is this, I, I'm not the, I didn't write the study. I'm just saying. <laughs> Whoever did it was huffing hard. Why? Because you have like a hunch? Because it doesn't sound right to you? No! Because it's false? High schooler detected? Someone getting their undergraduate degree in any science would not feel comfortable making that statement. They would at least put a source. They wouldn't just say that sounds wrong, so it is wrong. They would be like, check out this... Uh, article that you can't access unless you have uh, a .edu email address. Because despite the government funding the study, uh, the results are locked behind a paywall that's $15,000 a year unless you're a student at Virginia Tech. I don't really see myself playing Stray, a cyberpunk feline adventure game. It looks good. I, I legitimately am not saying it looks bad. I just don't think it's going to make for good NL content. And w what has happened a lot in the past is that like, there's like a weird cycle that goes around. And the cycle is, please play this thing that is a good game, but will probably make bad content. And then I say, no. And then people get mad and they say they miss the old NL. So then I'm like, fine, I'll play it. And then for like the first stream, like people show up and go, whoa, he's playing Stray. And then they leave and they go watch someone else play something that they actually enjoy watching. They like, they love the idea that I'm playing Stray. And then increasingly, like over the course of the next several uh, streams, I know the game's not that long. The only people who stay are the ones who have already beaten the game and thankfully stick around to give you hints to allow you to beat it with your like, idiocy addled streamer brain and everybody else just you watch the not just the analytics but the engagement tanks the the chats moving like one message every four minutes and it's usually like people they're not even talking about the stream they're talking about like um so what did you guys eat for lunch today and then i use in my head i say well let's not do that again and then I, we're now at the, this is the point we're at in the cycle where I tell you why I don't want to do it. And then you get mad and you say, I miss the old NL. And we've come all over. This was like Sunday streams for years. We get like 5,000 people that vote in the straw poll. And they're like, I want to see you play control. And then we play control and there's like 2,000 people there and they all fell asleep. There's just one dude in chat mad that I called the guy a short king because he was shorter than my, my character in game. So it just goes like, it, it's an Ouroboros. It's, a, it's an endless like intra-content cycle. Don't you think you're popular enough to stream whatever you want now? 
that's the that's the thing is that this is what I want. You want me to stream what you want, which is stray, which I have no actual interest in. I've been playing what I want for like a month. It's been in incredible. There's been so much uh so much fall guys, so much super auto pets. A little bit of Isaac as a kicker. Occasional new game like we played today. Well, like, here's the thing. I would play the End of the Breach update myself. But, like, you can just go look at the, um, like, the YouTube videos of uh, End of the Breach. And you can see why I'm not going to bring it back for, like, you know, just a week straight. First video, holy cow, it's a new game from the people who made FTL. It's probably, like, 200,000 views. Episode 4 is, like, 17,000 views. Every comment. Can you believe what he did on turn 75? Instead of killing the boss by uh, taking all their HP away, you could have t killed the boss by pushing them into the water, thus preserving an extra machine part or something like that. But again, the, 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 it's a, I, I know how this sounds. It's not, and this is like rude to say. It's not a me problem, it's, it's actually like a you problem. I'm loving life. It's you being like, here's a game suggestion, and me being like, here's why I don't want to do this. And then you're thinking that I asked. <laughs> not to be insulting, but like you're making the suggestion and I'm saying no, and then you're like, here's another suggestion. And I'm like, well, I, I don't, it, it's not meant to be rude, I'm just saying. Why not enter the gungeon? Let me hit you with another, uh, let me let me answer your unasked for question with another unasked for question. Why enter the gungeon? I don't understand the, cause it's fun? Yeah, this is fun. Is it? Yeah, I'm having a great time. Plus, hold on, hold, let me let me find out who said is it here. Cause I just want to make sure that this is, this is honest. Hold on, I'm scrolling up to where it says is it. Is it? Okay, that's captorable. I'm looking at the chat logs, 999 plus messages. Also, hold on, how many of those are from today? I'm not messing with you. You've been here from 9 to 1 p.m. That's the whole stream so far. And you've probably left 100 messages in the chat. So, like, if you're not having fun, why are you pretending? You're engaged? You're watching? You're still here? You're in talking with other people in the chat? It's not even an argument. I'm just putting myself, I'm putting my case out here. <laughs> It's not even hate watching. The comments are all like they're talking about metal straws like we were earlier in the stream. <laughs> but again, it, you know, people don't they they might like what they're watching right now, but they're like, holy cow, next week's episode is going to be amazing. And the episode that came out seven years ago is the absolute top. It doesn't get any better than that. We would like to see your stream improved. I mean, now you're just like actually being rude, not to be uh, like responding with rudeness myself. How has the stream improved by going back and playing Enter the Gungeon that we played fucking 700 hours of on stream already and, and YouTube videos over the course of the last seven years? You didn't read the whole comment? Yeah, because it was too long. <laughs> it was like, it was, it got pushed out of the chat in like two seconds. I you could read pretty quick, but not that fast. So I, I, I guess, you know, we'll, we'll come back maybe on Friday. I'll do a stream, because uh, the only thing that matters, it's not banter, it's just the game selection. We'll do 180 games. We'll play each game for, for one minute. We'll get to the title screen. There will be no banter whatsoever, and, and I'll have the biggest variety stream of all time. Everybody will hate it, and they'll still be talking about it. Uh, they, they'll ironically say, hey, when are you going to do another mega variety stream? And then it will become genuine, and people will say, I wish when he did new stuff, like that mega variety stream. Sure, it didn't really work out all that well, but at the same time, at least it was like novel. And then like a year after that, it would be like, um, no, actually that was the best stream he's ever done. Like the further it gets calcified into the, into the brain, the more like the lies you tell yourself become true. You just gotta shut up and pop. Like, people have actually tri tricked themselves into thinking that Inception is a bad movie. Everybody watched the movie in theaters and gasped when they didn't show what happened to the spinning top at the end. They said that was a 10 out of 10. Chris Nolan's a genius. Two years later, they watch one video essay. Haven't seen the movie again ever since, but they go, you know what? I trust the video essayist more than I trust the feelings that I had when I actually watched the movie myself. Actually, I've decided that the thoughts that I had when I watched it were wrong, and having not seen it in five years, the thoughts that I have now are right. It's actually mid. My, when I was watching the movie, I thought it was good, but my memory of the movie 
is mid, so I'm gonna say it's mid. I'm getting plus twos, I'm getting minus twos. The scary thing, this is the least amount of, of the number two I've seen in chat, the numeral itself, in a long time. Which means people are actually arguing. Which honestly is nice, because I was getting annoyed myself, so now that I've passed that annoyment, annoyance on to other people, I think that that's... It feels nice. It means I've infected you with the, uh, with the annoyance, and as a result, um, I'm not winning, but we're all losing. Multiverses, look, here's the thing, it looks interesting, but I do worry with fighting games. The only people who are gonna play multiverses are people that are, like, already good at Smash. And I don't want to do that. I'm not going to get multiverses and get my ass kicked as fucking, like, you know, LeBron James or whatever. There's an MMR system. Yeah, but just, there's a, it's a self-selecting group, right? Like, the average person that would even choose to play a fighting game is, um, you know, already the, the person that goes and looks at... Like, people post memes of frame data. I'm not good enough at fighting games to even know what, a, what frame data is. So when people are like, yo, dude, check this out. And then there's like a yellow box around something and then like a blue box around something else. I'm like, I don't even understand the joke. I did win one round of the um, Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl Coney tournament though. That is true. That was scary. You know what? That's what I get. I gotta recognize I'm not a hater in Fall Guys. I'm a survivor. What happened? Why did I get shot straight up into the air? I'm also think, dude, because I'm not accusating yet. <laughs> accusing? I'm not accusing. But that did also happen to us in that one final where I felt like we just got shot into the air by like a ghost ball. I don't know, it could be desync or something. I'm not assuming it's that, that there's some Hackers that are like, check it out, I got a... I got a little blast of air that can push people straight up into the sky. It's just an act of God, a force majeure. I don't know, it's a good, there was... This is a, an ultimate one guy, so I'm not mad. But there was one person who said, play Phasmophobia. This is my, my hater arc. For me, Phasmophobia is simultaneously the most boring game to play and to watch. A lot of people clearly love it. A lot of people had a... Of when, because we were on like vacation when it came out, or we were like away for a week or something, and then w when we came back, everyone was like, "You gotta play Phasmophobia. It's like the greatest uh, stream game of all time." And admittedly, like maybe I didn't have the best introduction, but I was mostly just walking around the house shouting uh, someone's like an old lady's name, and then eventually she came in and like grabbed my face, and I was like, "Now I'm dead." The funny part of it is the way when you see your friends moving. When they're like bent, but they're like, they're bent at the knees, not at the waist, and they're like half height, and they're going like this, and they're like... Silas! Silas, how old are you? That part is funny. Why, why do you like, just go, just jump. Can you just jump so we can all make it? Like, I don't understand why you have to like... Be <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, I'm just gonna wait this one out. Didn't make it out of that one. That's an unfortunate no. Patience is a virtue. You sound like me when I have road rage. My road rage is definitely growing too. But I actually, here's the thing. I think road rage is actually good. As long as you stop it, like you never get out of the car and you always keep it in perspective that you're just driving. If you get out of your car or brandish a weapon at somebody, obviously you're like a piece of crap. But like getting mad at people for making mistakes while driving that are dangerous, I'm gonna say it, it's actually based. Maybe you embarrass that person and they'll endeavor to become a better driver in the future. I, I very, I give people the finger now and then, but I very rarely honk because I don't want to, I don't want to be, oh, oh, I'm so mad. I'm gonna make everybody look at me to see how mad I am and maybe the person who made me mad will know that it's about them. Like I don't like to do that, but on Sunday, the day before we left for vacation, we were running like so many errands, okay? I get behind, it's a one lane road, I get behind somebody, they're doing 20 under the speed limit with nobody in front of them, okay? Already, I'm like, 
I'm okay, I'm holding it in, but I'm like, this is unnecessary. It's actually making things less, less safe for everybody. Then we get to the first stoplight, wait at the stoplight. It turns green. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. What am I supposed to do? I didn't give a courtesy honk. I gave like for long enough to know that like not only are you fucking up, but I see it and I'm making you mad or you're making me mad, I should say. And then Kate was talking about it on her stream and there were people in her chat that's like, that's so rude, it's just a simple mistake. Yeah, but it's probably a simple mistake this lady's making five times a day. So she needs to cut that shit out. Like she needs to make an effort to not do that shit. Also, like why are you not going when the light turns green? That's the scary question. Are you looking at your phone? Are you like this? Why are you distracted so much when you're driving? Or is it that you just have like such poor reaction time? And if you have such poor reaction time, you should not be driving, honestly, because that shit is like pretty important in the whole scheme of things to the, the utility of actually being on the road without getting into a terrible accident that could not only hurt yourself, but also the people around you. That might be complete strangers who are actually like good at driving. <laughs> If you want to feel morally superior for being a bad driver, get on a bike, okay? That's how the rest of us do it. Put both AirPods in, ignore stop signs and red lights, and then if anybody ever honks at you, just say, I'm driving the only carbon neutral vehicle on the planet, okay? If, you, if you're in your car, you have to pay attention and, and follow the rules. Otherwise, you may, be, you may be a little honked at, okay? I would love if more people rode bikes. Well, and I mean that sincerely, even as someone who drives, because if more people rode bikes, it would be a lot easier to turn right because you would just never be able to do it until there was a yellow light. Instead, I'm constantly looking to see, A, are there pedestrians? B, are there cyclists? If they're cyclists, are they about to cross the intersection? If they're about to cross the intersection, do I have time to go? Do they know that I'm going to wait for them? Or do they think that I'm not paying attention to them? Are they driving fast enough that they're going to get here when I'm mid-turn and they're going to slap the side of my car or something? Like, I, I know how this sounds, but like, even separated bike lanes, I feel like they've got to be even better. Like, cyclists are, are so endangered when they have to go straight uh, at an intersection where a car that they're next to is turning right. I'm a pedestrian, so the cyclists are almost as bad as a car for me. Well, in some ways. Annoying, yes, but you would like, you know, you'd probably live if they hit you. You'd just be like a little hurt. So there is like, there's a huge difference there. But then like, when we have good bike lanes, cyclists on the sidewalk, very annoying to me. Much more annoying. Hoverboards, quote unquote hoverboards on the sidewalk. E-scooters, which are actual vehicles. E-bikes. It's a car. You gotta be on the, you shouldn't even be in the damn bike lane, much less the sidewalk, you should be on the road. Well, at least in the city. Like, you probably don't want to go on the highway. Two bikes connect, two bikes with a little house in the middle? Okay. It is true, like, again, I'm not knocking the cyclists. If everybody biked and cities were designed for it or walked, the world would probably be a better place. And by probably, I mean, like, I don't think you could actually argue against that, except NASCAR would be a lot less enjoyable. But regardless, it is annoying when you're at a four-way stop and you got your own mental ledger of when you're gonna go. And this is not even fair to the law-abiding cyclists, but you see a cyclist come up next to a car at a four-way stop and you're like, well, there's about like a 50% chance they respect the stop sign to begin with, a 50% chance they just blow right through it. And then what does that do to the order? Like if they blow through the stop sign, but I can go straight. Can I skip the line because it doesn't impact anybody else? But the dude that was supposed to go was turning right. So like he would lose his spot in line. And then which is why everybody should just follow the exact rules of the road and not put their own interests in front of anybody else's necessarily. But I get that that's a controversial take. Okay, but how about when I stop on my bike, the cross traffic refuses to go even though I wait for them? I guess, you know, the answer is just that everybody uh, can suck <laughs> while driving uh, any sort of vehicle. That seems to make a lot of sense. Yeah, like that's the thing, right? Because I also get annoyed by pedestrians while I'm driving, especially. But like pedestrians, mostly good. Some people, for no reason, leave their toes hanging out over the intersection, just daring me to like sever their foot in half for 
to save 0.1 seconds when the light changes. They don't even notice when the light changes to a walk signal because they're looking at their phone anyway. Like, why are you leaving your toes over the edge? It, it provides no advantage and like, it, the risk reward is literally like infinite to zero. But anyway, or pedestrians coming up to a light that is clearly a hand, but walking as fast as they can, or like sprinting, not jogging, but like they're, they're intimating that they're not going to stop even though you have the right of way. And then like coming to a, a Bugs Bunny stop with the heels digging into the concrete right at the edge after approaching the, the intersection at a full sprint. You're like, thanks for that. Cars that stop just outside of the intersection. It's all annoying. There's, there's a few intersections, that, especially at rush hour traffic in Vancouver, where like even if your light is green, you can't go into the next lane until like across the intersection until the next light turns green so the full lane can start to move so that you can then take a space. But you'll be sitting there, like maybe turning left in the opposite direction, and uh, the light will turn green and the car will just block the intersection. And you're looking at them, and I, I know what they're saying in their head. But the light's green. Green means go. But the light's green. I have a green light. But it, they just block the intersection, so anybody turning left is stuck there for like four times longer than they have to be. What if the car behind you honks? Then you give them the finger. You have a directive to not block the intersection, even if your light is green. What are they gonna do? Like, if you block the intersection, it's not like they're gonna be able to drive through your car. You can't block the intersection. If, if the car behind you honks because you're like not running over a pedestrian, you don't go, oh, someone's mad, I'm just gonna kill this guy. Pedestrians, I, I would admit pedestrians probably the least annoying for sure. Absolutely. Drivers are the most annoying. It's not even rock, paper, scissors. Like, as someone who drives, like, drivers are the most annoying and also have the largest consequences to being bad at, at what they do. Because <laughs> if you ask drivers what's the most annoying, like, uh, vehicle on your average commute, they're going to say other drivers. You might get annoyed by, like, a cyclist now and then. But like, you, I get annoyed by a driver like, like once every four blocks. It's maybe my own personal problem, but you, oh, see you later. Take one of those. I want the other one. I wanted the other one. Okay. We're in a very risky position here. Never mind. I'm a genius. Oh, the, the most annoying pedestrian as a pedestrian is when you get pedestrians who are not walking straight. They choose to walk on a diagonal. So you move in such a way that you're going to like give them the space, but then they're looking at their phone and they're taking the space that you just gave up to, to you gave up, you're moving into that space to give them the space that they should have if they're walking straight. Dude, that was an insane dodge. On Yes, I glanced. I was so excited to see people reacting to the kill that I got that I, I glanced and walked off the edge. I walked on a diagonal. While talking about bad walkers and drivers? Well, yeah, but I mean, this is digital. I don't care if you walk badly. Well, I guess I do, but it, not in the final. If you wanna walk badly in the final and then die, that's great news for me. If you walk badly on like gate crash and block me and the seven people behind you because like you don't know how to tie your shoes, then I'm like, well, yeah, that is annoying. Oh, wow. Oh, what are you coming in like 11th? That's embarrassing, man. There's no skill to coming first in Seesaw, but. A little? Nah, I don't think so. Not really. JT5665. Slash user. JT. JT, JT, J. Okay, which, who are you? Are you JTizzle450? Let me take a look here. When did you most recently chat? 
July 27th, 2022. That's today at 1.10. They've been chatting today. Hmm, okay. This is the sort of thing that will give you some pause. J, so what? that's JTizzle450, okay. <laughs> Hold on, I got to pop out chat again. I had to close it. Hide him. I'm just doing some forensic accounting right now. Slash user JT. Do it. Everyone went invisible. All the JTs went in, went invisible in the, in that like little thirty second period. I can still find you. I have admin powers. That is funny. That's not me. I'm, I'm TJ. Oh, sorry. That's TJ Sizzle. Oh, did I did I write TJ instead? No, I don't. You just just very similar. TJ Sizzle. <laughs> That's so good. Least psycho fall guys play. You think there's 14 people in front of me? You're literally last. You're lucky I can't turn my camera around to prove that. I'm actually happy to see the cat now. Because, like, you're... Like, I'm at work right now. You're in your off hours. Do you ever realize that? Like, I had to finish this and pursue, like, some personal development. Mostly going to the pharmacy, buying four liters of laxative, and then, uh... Shitting for the rest of the night. But, like, you're... You're choosing to do this with the limited time that's available to you on planet Earth. You don't, do you not have the voice that I have in my head? Which is after I've wasted 45 minutes of my time, I look in my room and I say, this could be tidied. I look at my stomach and I say, could always flatten that a bit. There's always some chores to be done. I could do, I could do something in the house so that my wife doesn't have to do it later tonight. Work from home exists? If you're doing this shit on work from home, you should be fucking fired. Where do you work? Tell me where you work. Hey, 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 get out of the car. Where's your, who's your boss? What's your boss's email address? Don't narc, don't narc. No, actually I support that level of corporate thievery. Cause here's the thing. You are like, if you only have, if you can not get fired doing two hours of work every day and six hours of just like pretending to work or, or goofing off or whatever, then that's not your fault. You're doing exactly enough to have your job be happy that they're paying you. Like, they're like, this person is indispensable to the company. We, we, we wouldn't fire them. They're being paid a fair wage. I'm not, I'm not the, like, okay. I'm not trying to say, why would you never work harder than you absolutely have to? But why would you work harder than you have to at something that somebody else that you probably don't like that much wants you to do? You should work harder than you have to at stuff that you find rewarding for sure. But I think if you can get away with... You know, not doing the bare minimum, but doing the exact amount necessary in order to stay employed, then what that is called is a market fit. You're being paid what they think you're worth, and you're applying what you think they're paying you for. It's it's a it's a perfect economic system. Yeah, exactly. If they if you want me to well, they, this doesn't really work for me necessarily, because I honestly have no idea what actually like controls how much I make on a monthly basis. Some streams, I'm like, that was ass, but like one benevolent person gave out a bunch of gift subs. And I'm like, I was rewarded for mediocrity today. If you're in like an office job or something, and if people, if your boss wants you to work harder, they should either threaten to fire you <laughs> or pay you more. But here's the thing, you might be like, oh, I'm getting paid for like the three hours. I'm getting paid eight hours for the three hours I'm doing, but you're probably being underpaid for the, on an eight hour basis. If you did eight hours of work, they would have to pay you 2.25 X what they're paying you right now. You're paid to be there for eight hours a day. And then just to get as much done as they need you to do to not get fired. At least that's my experience from the very limited office working that I have. I think there's a different, like if you're in a job where like, you know, you're like a, a carpenter, there's like a difference. You know, if you if your contract is like, I got to make this damn 
chest of drawers, then the more you slack off at work, the more you're kind of costing yourself. But if your boss is like, we got eight people in this department doing two people's quantity of work, then all right, you're, you're getting two hours a day from the whole squad. I guess what I'm advocating for is I think that businesses should fire more people. They should hire less and, and fire more. What if I get paid to answer phones as a help desk and I rarely get calls at night? I mostly sleep for four hours. Is that bad? I would say not bad at all. As long as you wake up when the phone rings, who cares? I mean, if you're on call, you should just... You're, I mean, you're, you're off work. If you're on call and nobody's calling, congrats, you're off work. I would say not the asshole in a heartbeat. The easiest not the asshole in my life. They're not paying you to be on the phone. They're paying you to pick it up. Multiple monitors at work. I'm working at the same time. Yeah, but you're not the cat playing Fall Guys against me. Unless you're like monitoring a fucking like wastewater treatment plant's nitrogen levels or something on an old little CRT monitor from like 1971. You're n nodding politely in the, the Zoom call. Well, probably the same person who makes all your meetings take four times longer than they actually have to take because they refuse to let any point pass without providing their input, whether they agree or disagree. Like you, you're just like, uh-huh, 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 yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. What? 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 Get on. Get trashed. Garbage. <laughs> you fucking suck. Oh, man. Anyway. No, Zoms is fun to lose. Hello. You almost got me. I'm going to give you a chance here. I'm going to give you a little chance. Okay, that was fun. See you never. <laughs> that was a real person? No, dude. It's. I mean, yeah, obviously. Why doesn't this ever go on YouTube? Because it just gives people an avenue to vent their frustrations and type shit like, why are you playing this stupid game? Go back and do the Dark Palace in Hollow Knight. That's not a bot. It's a hacker. <laughs> Give Dude, we just killed a hacker. Maybe I should put this one on YouTube. Killing a hacker in, in uh, Zoms Royale, not clickbait. I think I would rather drink apple juice than Gatorade. Okay, that one might have been a bot. They were using um, their fists when they had a mythic AR. What are these players doing? Dan, it's just, you know like when you watch Shroud play Valorant, you're like, oh my God, everyone who plays this is so bad. No. It's because I'm so good, I bring down the level of player around me. Instead, it's uh, the orange juice lobby did it. Somehow, by the way, get ready, get stuck. Get stuck. I'm gonna get you. Insane play. What's going on here? It's a damn feeding frenzy. I think I, can I be honest with you? I just got killed by a bot. It actually, it happened. Pay me? Pay me? I didn't know it ever... It was gonna come to pass. I got killed by a bot. I think it was just a stray bullet. Right to the head. I guess every shot in Zoms is a, is a head shot. Quick little sip me. Quick little reload. You uh, Just to be honest with you, you would never see me do that in PUBG. I would get overwhelmed. I would just give up and die. Okay, smart play. You knew I was gonna shoot my wad at that TNT. Ah! <laughs> I didn't know he could pull me through the wall, man. All right, let me, I just gotta do something. Slash user, Dan Keesling. Dan, you got banned in my chat in 2017? How did that happen? I, def I remember timing you out. That's a given. On 
On August 3rd, 2020, Northern Lion timed out Dan Giesling for 129,600 seconds. That was a... I remember that exact situation. It's because you timed me out of your chat for annoying you during Sekiro. As soon as I saw that my, my chat box was locked... I went back to my chat. I think I, first I Googled what's one week in seconds. And then I, <laughs> and then I said slash timeout Dan Giesling 129,600. It's called mutually assured destruction. Okay. I wanted to see what you bet on. Did you win? I, how do I see what you bet on? That's a day and a half. Maybe you banned me for 24 hours. And then I said, guess what? Here's 36. I, def I was like, I'm going to do whatever you did plus 50%. It's been almost two years, though. I'm over it in many ways by now. Anyway, we did qualify. <laughs> he war chest doubted the headshot round. Yeah, but what did he do this time? Did he war chest? I will not be live tomorrow. I'll be uh, performing a show for what I assume is two. Hopefully, the, I'm assuming that there's the gastroenterologist and then also the anesthesiologist, anesthesiologist. I'm hoping they're going to be there. I don't want... I do it if they're working from home. They're doing that shit over Teams. I'm going to die for sure. Sorry, I had a sore throat today. I'm going to be administering your uh, anesthesia remotely. I'll uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy your day tomorrow. I'll be back on uh, Friday. And I'll see, you, I'll see you then. Lady Flip, you got nothing to worry about. We were just... It, it's verbal sparring. It's just a bit of, just a bit of banter. Anyway, I'll send you over to my wife's stream. I'm going to go get some lunch. Just kidding. I'm going to go buy a bunch of apple juice and uh, laxatives. See you soon. Heart and soul. It's got a lot of heart and soul. I don't know the rest of the words, but it's got a pretty good baseline. Pretty good baseline. Heart and soul. My wife is streaming Mahjong Monday's Pog. I'll send you right over to her stream. Hope you have a great rest of your Monday night. I'll see you tomorrow for Dome Keeper. Boop, I